The uh, following prose passage question is asking for us to find one of the main arguments that the author is trying to make. Uh, generally for uh, ACT reading passages, what this means is you're going to look at the topic sentences and try to match them with the answer choices. But for prose passages, there's no topic sentences, since we're telling a story. So we can go ahead and completely ignore that and try to make an inference from the passage as a whole. Uh, so go ahead and read the answer choices first and see if you can find something in the passage that makes you uh, infer that uh, that's a correct answer choice. Moths have short lifespans. Well, that's definitely something that um, the passage would seem to show. The moth is very alive at the very beginning, um, as the energy of the world, so it looks looks very lively, but then dies shortly after. Uh, we do know that moths live significantly shorter lives than humans, but um, it doesn't seem to be one of the main arguments the author is trying to make. Uh, it seems to be that we're looking at the moth's life and death here uh, in order to contrast the fact that this energy of the world that the moth has is that same energy which the birds, the rooks, the plowmen, men, people working in the fields, horses, etc., living things, uh, and even inanimate things that are beautiful in the world, like the bareback downs, uh, possess as well. And then, uh, just like all those other living beings, it has absolutely no power uh, over death when death comes. Death is stronger than I am, just like death is stronger than human beings. So it's not about moths simply having short lifespans. It's about moths, like every other living being, uh, not having a way to fend off death, uh, despite having lived a very, you know, um, lively life. So we can go ahead and get rid of this answer choice. Even a vivid, joyful life must end. Uh, yeah, so this makes a lot more sense. So uh, this moth here is very alive at the beginning. Um, it looks like it, it really has a lot of energy. But then toward the end, it has to die, just like all of us have to die, just like all of us uh, have to know death, as it says here. So this looks really good. Let's see if we find something better. Country life is beautiful and full of joy. Maybe. Uh, we're talking about how beautiful country life might be here at the beginning, but it seems that these properties of living beings in the countryside setting here that we have are also true of living beings anywhere. Um, you know, workers in a city also have to, you know, might be very lively, but then come death, uh, will die. And this sort of thought process here might be beautiful and full of joy, but there's also something, you know, you can have hard fates like the moths. Uh, you can have pathetic opportunities for happiness as compared to other living beings. Uh, you might be at a disadvantage in the amount of joy that you can actually experience. Um, so there's a lot of negative, sad things too in this lifestyle. So even if you did say that the, one of the main arguments is about country life itself, it's not just beautiful and full of joy. There's a lot of really sad things that happen to living beings in the country and potentially out of the country. Uh, joy is pointless because it must eventually end. Well, here, joy must eventually end, it seems, in that the moth dies. And we don't know that there will be joy after that moth dies. But is it pointless? That is a really, really big assumption here, and definitely not something we see any evidence of in this passage. Um, so that wouldn't be a good inference. That would just be us assuming something, and we don't want to do that. Uh, There's no evidence of uh, Wolf here thinking that the joy that the moth feels, it's, it's you know, uh, that energy of the world that it has is pointless because the moth dies. Uh, so be very careful there. I hope that that helps with this problem, and happy prepping.